Hi everybody, it's Mr. D at In the Middle with Mr. D1 at blogspot.com with some teaching tips for Lesson 25, Day 1 of my sight singing program S-Cubed, available on Teachers Pay Teachers at Music in the Middle with Mr. D. Alright, so this is the day we've been waiting for and working for, for 24 lessons. For myself, I began in August with these beginners, and now, it was early August too, today is February 24th. That's how long it's taken us to get to this moment. And we have carefully and methodically built every skill so that we have a lot of independent sight readers now through that unison process. And they're going to need every tool in their toolbox today, but they've been using them so frequently they should have no problem with this particular exercise. Um, to get them uh, ready for it, though, we want to remind them in the written warm-up about the two-part rhythm exercises and the things that they would notice in order to help them recover. They need all the recovery strategies possible. We want them to notice the other people's parts because sometimes they can get information from it that will help them be successful in their own part. Plus, it makes them better choral musicians as well. Um, then we're going to do the group rhythm exercise where they actually use those skills and I've implanted some specific unisons and things for them to notice. And then you're going to go and let them look at the sight singing example. Um, and it's two parts. If you have not taught them about joined staffs, uh, point out the line on the left that joins the two staffs together. Um, I'm sure probably most people have already taught that in their literature um, as, they're, as they've been teaching music through, this, through their year. Um, but in this moment, their goal, you want them to look at the, their part plus the other people's parts to study it. Guide them through that study process before you actually sing it. Don't time it today. Let them look at it and notice things like unison rhythms that I've written in. There are lots of them. Um, there are a couple of unison pitches that I've written in, and you want to pull, point those out as well. Um, and I think that is pretty much it. Um, and then in the below the sight singing example, as always, I've put things like, uh, to, this is very important, to notice what your first pitch is versus the other part's first pitch, because they have to sing themselves in and count themselves in at, at a different pitch, and they end on different pitches as well. That's going to be a challenge, but we want them to notice those things. We're going to start giving strategies uh, to, to them to help them with pitch, as well as noticing unison rhythm. But you want to make sure they, sometimes they don't hear you when you say unison pitch versus unison rhythm. You're going to have to make sure that you really make that super, super clear. Um, I, I think that um, measure five will be a, a bit of a challenge today. Just make sure that they get back up to that starting pitch. Um, give them a moment of chaos to sing it through on their own part. Then talk about and compare and contrast the two parts. Then give them another moment of chaos, one minute. Uh, and do some more comparing and contrasting. Um, and you might go up to three or four minutes of chaos with discussion, really quick discussion in between, but helping them zero in on the parts that maybe they have a unison rhythm or something like that so that uh, they have more chance of success. It is called successful sight singing and we want to help them get in there. We want to guide them carefully through that process and then we'll pull back again uh, and do less and less as we did with the unison sight singing. Right now we're teaching the process though. So that's what you've got in lesson 25, day one. I hope it's working for you in your classroom. Have a great day.